Hello, my name is Kambi Sanani, and today I'm going to talk about lumbar fusions, meaning fusions of the low back region. First things I'm going to look at is looking at the indications, meaning the reason for which we do a fusion. The most common reasons fusions are done uh, include slippage of the vertebrae, where we can see here the vertebrae all align well, and then bam, there is a forward slippage of this vertebrae relative to the others. Infections, tumors, or low back pain. Indications are important because they determine the success of the surgery. The most successful surgeries are done for the slippage, infection, or tumors. Uh, low back pain is a bit more unpredictable. Here we can see a fusion that has been done with screws have been placed and bone graft has been placed in between the uh, vertebrae. Now, there are different ways a fusion can be performed. Um, here we're going to look at an animation to show you exactly what we're talking about. This is the lumbar spine, the low back. We can see the vertebrae, the disc spaces which have essentially collapsed because it's a cadaver bone. And one way to do a fusion, meaning to join these bones together so the bones would not have as much motion or any motion for that matter, is to go from the front where we can go in, take a piece of disc out, put a piece of bone in here, and that will allow this bone to fuse between the two uh, bones above and below and prevent this segment uh, from moving. Another way to do it is to go from the back where we make an incision in the back and we can put some bone on the sides, the same idea being the bone can fuse to the two vertebrae and prevent motion at that vertebrae. Like anything else, spinal surgery has risks. Because these are relatively bigger surgeries, risks are a bit greater than uh, some of the other surgeries we do in the spine, like the decompressions. The risks include infection, bleeding, nerve damage, including paralysis, bowel bladder, sexual dysfunction, medical complications such as heart attacks, pneumonia, blood clots, or even death, although that's not very common. There is a chance that a complication may occur, uh, symptoms may worsen, including back pain or leg pain, and there may be a need for additional surgeries. Uh, nobody can really guarantee the results. Uh, but the success really depends on the indication or the reason for which the surgery is being done. Here's an example of degenerative disc disease, one of the reasons that spinal fusions are performed. We can see that these are normal discs, and here are the holes through which the nerves come out or the foramen. Uh, sometimes the disc degenerates, as we can see here. The disc has degenerated. Now there's bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, and the foramen, where the nerve comes through, has collapsed. What we do for that, uh, or any other type of uh, degeneration for which we do a surgery, uh, one way is to go from the front, as we had discussed. We go from the belly through the stomach, go down, take some of that disc out. Uh, this gives us an area where we can put a piece of bone in. So we take a cadaver bone, usually from the femur or the thigh bone, and we put that right in there. And we can see here that bone is sitting in between the vertebrae, which allows for these bones to fuse. Another way to do this is to put some screws into the back to hold things still. In this case, we are using a minimally invasive way to put the screws in, uh, in which we put a cannula down uh, through very small incisions, about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half through the skin, unlike originally when we used to do fusions requiring very big incisions in the back and uh, moving of the muscles, which was very painful. This allows us to put the screws essentially right through a small incision through the skin all the way down uh, into the spine. And then what we need to do is put a rod in between these screws, which in this case we do by bringing it through an arc, as we can see over here, right through the screws, and that allows us to lock the spine in position and allows the bone to heal up and create a fusion, as we can see here, where the screws have gone in and have locked into position. This is essentially what it would look like with the screws being in place. Sometimes we take the disc out and put a piece of bone here. Sometimes we don't. And we can see what the final results should look like. Another way that this can be done is to go ahead and get the disc from the back instead of going through the belly. Uh, here, again, we are doing it minimally invasively, meaning a small incision is placed. Uh, we can go ahead and put a light source in. We can see the bone, take off some of the bone from the back. This gives us direct access to the disc space, which is right here. Then we can go in, take some of the disc out from the back. And then the idea is we like to get in there and expand that disc 
like we do here where the disk had collapsed down. By expanding this disk, we open the foramen and also bring the disk level back to the way it was before it collapsed down. This also allows us to put some bone in and after we put the bone into this uh, space, we can see the piece of bone, we can put some screws and lock it in. So this also is another way of doing it, uh, doing this fusion uh, instead of doing a front and back fusion. So in summary, the most important thing we look at is the indications, meaning the reasons for which we are doing a fusion, which determines the success rate. We really need to be aware of the risks and the benefits involved. Uh, the risks are clearly present uh, and need to be uh, balanced versus how much improvement you're probably going to be getting. And there are different ways of doing, it, doing this fusion, either from the front, the back, or a combination.